I was a big fan of Harvest Moon when it came out on the GameCube. My future wife and I spent way more time than we should have playing it instead of studying in college. When Stardew Valley first came out, it piqued my interest. Maybe it could scratch the same itch. But I was busy at the time, so I put it off until this year when it was on sale. I immediately loved the trip back to the SNES era graphics and the love and care that Concerned Ape obviously put into the game. As I advanced in the game, each new level of skills brought new fun to the game. It's pretty easy to see why he has such a dedicated fan base on his subreddit. I will say, I'm a little surprised when I see people on the subreddit who have farms that are way past year 3. There's definitely a lot to do in Stardew Valley, but the biggest reason I haven't finished, you know, getting to the end of year 2, is because I've reached a point where essentially I have infinite money and nothing else I truly want to buy. It's the same thing that ended up killing Harvest Moon for my wife. Now I do understand the replayability factor, there are many reasons for that, including the fact that there's 4 or 5 different maps which require different farm strategies. I hope sometime in 2020 to finish the game, and then maybe later in 2020 to start a new farm. To be honest, I completely forgot I had played any single player games for Civ 6. I thought it was all going to be multiplayer turns. Yet in this year I played as Sonduck, Washington, Poundmaker, and Koopa. And yes, I played a ton of multiplayer games. In the aftermath of EA screwing up Max's classic SimCity, I checked out Cities XL. It was alright, and I had some fun with it. But soon after, I started hearing that that wasn't the game you wanted to be playing, you wanted to be playing Cities Skylines. Recently, it was available as part of a Humble Bundle, so I installed it, and I got re addicted to city building and city running. I started off the year very frustrated because something had changed. I don't know if it was in Spelunky, Dawn, Windows, or the Nvidia drivers, but it became impossible to record a game session. Then somehow I just had the idea to switch to recording the screen instead of the game, and that seemed to make the encoder happy. Spelunky was back on, and the kids got even more into it than they had been the previous year. I didn't remember playing any Pokemon this year. I thought we'd last played in 2018. I've never played any of the games as they came out when I was older, but I'd like to see this one to the end. Maybe Scart and I will pick it up again in 2020. The funny thing about this game is that when I got the Sonic Bundle from Humble Bundle, I was intending to play the more traditional Sonic games with my kids, but they really glommed onto the racing game. It was even more of a surprise since they haven't ever really wanted to play Mario Kart. If you've been following my yearly video game wrap-ups, you know I've been really enjoying the heck out of roguelites and roguelikes. As par for the course, with the latest generation of rogue descendants, this one has a really fun sense of humor, particularly in the definites that each character has, um, like being, you know, short-sighted or being really tiny or whatever. Uh, if I remember, I'll probably come back to this game in 2020 because I had a lot of fun with it. I've always wanted to play this game, but I was also hesitant because of the way that the old point-and-click adventure games were often absurdly hard in really weird ways. Often there is no way to win without reading a walkthrough. They also take a really long time, yeah, but I figured I'd give it a shot an extra life day. It did indeed prove to be quite frustratingly difficult. Time will tell if I return. Just before I made this list of my 2019 video games, my wife asked me why I hadn't played Contraption Maker this year with Scarlet. 
I told her Scarlet just hadn't asked, but it turns out she had asked, it had just been months since we played the game and had completely forgotten. One nice thing about roguelike games is they can be nice and short. You can die quickly and just have a fun little game session. So I think I'll probably have a little bit of FTL and other roguelikes appearing on each year's list. I just played this game because it had been a while since I last played Plants vs. Zombie when I was making Glitch Garden, a Plants vs. Zombie clone in Unity. I think it's really hilarious, I only played 7 minutes of this game in the entire year. Well that turned out to be a lot more varied than I remembered. If you had asked me what games I played in 2019, I definitely would have mentioned Civ, Stardew Valley, and City Skylines, and of course, those were my top three games. But I had completely forgotten that I had played Contraption Maker earlier in the year with Scarlet. Um, that was one of her favorite games in previous years, and I thought we hadn't played at all in 2019. Um, I'd forgotten that we had done um, a few episodes of Pokemon. Um, I'd actually like to see if she wants to finish that this year, um, since we kind of reached a point where, at the time, it was kind of she was kind of struggling. But now, with how much better at reading she is and how much better at video game she is. I think she'd probably enjoy it a lot more. Uh, I was actually surprised how much Spelunky I played. I thought I'd played maybe half an hour, an hour or so, but I ended up logging five hours in Spelunky, which is uh, pretty surprising for me. And of course, I completely forgot about the ne Necro Dancer, since I only did seven minutes of it, and uh, FTL. Um, I, I would have thought uh, the last time I played FTL was in 2018. So um, yeah, that's why I like making these um, these yearly summaries. And uh, let's see what 2020 brings so far. A whole lot of Sonic racing with the kids.